All right, we're back on this. Sorry for the huge delay there. Got busy doing a bunch of other stuff. Uh, a lot of it was out of frustration from running into uh, different snags in the build, but uh, back on it. Should get it done just in time to uh, ride it in the freezing cold. <laughs> um, remove the rear fender. I'm gonna work tonight on getting the uh, rear sprocket installed here. After finally finding the right uh, part, I needed a 48 tooth uh, zero offset rear sprocket. Uh, it's but it's the newer, the center holes, the newer dimension for the uh, for newer Harleys. So. I was struggling trying to find that particular piece, but I have found it and uh, I'm going to get it installed tonight. Uh, shooting on a new camera here, uh, the Canon HF, HF10 served me quite well over the years here, but I decided to... Um, Decided to upgrade to the Canon HF G10, which this is not an easy task for one guy. Um, difference on the camera is bigger lens, and this is running the wide conversion lens right now. But really, that's about it. Uh, I take that back. The HF the HF10 was an older camera, so there's a lot of new, more new features on this one. Looks a little bit better. Uh, let me get this axle the rest of the way off here and uh, get back with you. Next, we come out of it with the uh, 40 foot pounds of torque. This is uh, my new fancy torque wrench. Till a couple years ago. I had no idea you weren't supposed to uh, store torque wrenches tensioned. So I had a couple uh, nice spring loaded ones that I ruined like that. Alright. Usually I'd want to do this. Uh, with some help getting this rear axle in by myself is not the easiest thing to do. First thing I'm going to do though is uh, coat the axle in anti seize. I use this fancy Loctite stick stuff. See that? I like to use uh, red, blue, any kind of Loctite, anything I can get in this stick form. I really like it. Uh, Loctite's always the company Loctite's always done me well as far as using their thread lock and their different chemicals. Uh, you can pick this stuff up. Most, uh, I think I got this at uh, Home Depot a long time ago. I haven't seen it there since, but uh, I know Lowbrow Customs carries the stick stuff. You can get it through them. Do this without making a huge mess. Again, fumbling around with the rear tire while trying to put all this on isn't going to be the simplest thing to do. Let's see what I can do here. Alright, so now I got the uh, front jack lifted just right where I can manipulate the uh, axle myself here. And until I get my chain out and on. Slide the castle net back on there. Put the cotter pin in so it stays in point. Okay. So one of the things I still need to tackle, you can see how the actual uh, the seat springs are crooked there. I'm either going to make a relocating bracket for the bottom, so it brings those more inboard. Um, I, I'd just rather not hack off the the lower part of the 
seat mounts there on the frame and re-weld them on there. I just don't want to mess with the screwing up the nice powder coating on the frame. So I'll probably just make a bracket for now. If I ever need to make any modifications to the frame later, I'll fix it proper. Um, it just doesn't work the way it's sitting right now. I don't, I don't know if uh, they use a different seat normally for that, but uh, you can see it just uh, doesn't quite fit there correctly. Got another part from Custom Tech here. Uh, when you take the SNS teardrop off, you've got your enrichment uh, or choke. Um, lever right here so I'm using this uh, after hours choppers air cleaner I needed another way of uh, engaging that uh, this is again from custom tech there's a two stage little step on the side here here's what I ended up doing for the uh, front fork stops uh, I just use little brass acorn nuts there uh, Cut a piece of threaded rod, red lock, lock tighted those into the acorn nut, and I checked it with the tank mounted on the bike, and it's nice, to, good to go. One of the areas that I've had the most amount of trouble with has been the front axle fitting. Um, we've got this custom hub here for a speedometer drive. Uh, I've been through two different speedometer drives now that are both wrong. I uh, torqued this one last weekend with a buddy and uh, it just crushed it. Uh, it's the wrong spacing behind it. So I'll remove that. I'm just going to measure the distance and, and just put a full size spacer in there and be done with it. I don't really have any intentions of running a speedometer on this unit or on this bike, I guess. Uh, so, got to remove all that, get a nice measurement, and uh, get a spacer made. So you can see I haven't gotten too much done, but I've been working on it here and there. Uh, I was really hoping to be done by now, but other things came up, and like I said, uh, I usually try to stop working on stuff if I get really frustrated with it so I don't harm myself or uh, certain expensive parts that I don't want to harm. <laughs> I've got a bit of a temper at times, as we all do. Uh, just gonna keep working on it and do as much as I can by myself. I have not much further to go. I've just been going through all the bolts and everything, making sure everything's tight and torqued down. I gotta go through and make sure I did the motor and tranny correctly, get the uh, primary plate on, get the primary all buttoned up. Then it'll be on to the tank. I've actually started to polish it and I think I may go with the polish, uh, just just get it polished on the tank. It's aluminum, so it'll polish up nice. The rear fender, I'd like to get that brass fitted on there eventually, but for now I think I'm just going to paint the stock rear fender uh, black and get that on there, just gloss black for now. And then that's all I can think of for now. Got to get the headlight, headlights all all done and ready to go. It just needs to be wired, but the bracket's treated and it's ready to go. Uh, I think that's about it, so just wanted to thank you all for following the videos here, and I do apologize for the big the big wait there. I have been keeping up uh, updates and everything on the on my main channel page. I people have asked about it, so. Uh, if you ever want to message me or have any questions, you can definitely uh, contact me anytime on YouTube. I'm usually pretty good about answering questions on there. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention, I did go with a... Uh, there's this guy, Rob, that's contacted me on uh, through my YouTube videos, actually. he It's funny, he built almost the same exact bike. I think he did a knuckle and the same Baker Trans and the same bike. Um, so he's finished it. He's had He has... Um, he has friends that were able to help him. Um, it was also his first build, so I, th I think, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so he was able to get his done, so I've actually been asking him questions. Uh, he found this uh, part number for me for the top engine mount, um, so that was nice to be able to order that. Uh, I think that's about it for now. If I have any other questions for him, I usually just email him back and forth. So. Hopefully one day, we'll, he lives over in Ohio, so it's not too far of a drive for me. Maybe I'll get over there and ride with him sometime. That'd be pretty cool to have 
similar bikes riding together. So, all right, guys, I think that's uh, pretty much it for today. Just wanted to give you a new update as I am now working on it again finally.